Well, uh, what I wanted to do today is I've often been asked about what are the differences between uh, the two different common types of functional size measurement, which is the ISPUG functional size measurement method and the more recent, um, the developed method, the cosmic method. And so what I'm going to do is just start off with the background of functional size so that you can understand um, the, the commonalities and the standards behind both these methods. And then we're going to have a look at the uh, similarities and differences between the methods. So we'll first of all, we'll just have a look at the history. And this looks rather convoluted first off, but all of the methods that we're currently looking at started with Alan Elbert back in the late 70s when he first uh, realised that the size of software was not long to code, but surely from a user perspective, when they were looking at the size of a piece of software, they were looking at the amount of functionality that that software delivered to the user. From Alan Elbeck's initial work, a number of different methods were formed. The most common method is the ISPUG method, and the NESMA method um, is a, gr a grouping. The Netherlands have worked in parallel with ISPUG over the years, and, and their, their method is very, very similar, but not quite the same as ISPUG, but there's a, there's a pretty good match between the two methods. Uh, there was an early work by uh, Katie Jones with feature, feature points, and Charles Simon developed Mark II function point analysis uh, in the late um, 1980s. There was also some other work um, done by Boeing in, in 3D function points. So people took this concept to Elbert and started to develop different methodologies. The two major, or the three major ones that came out of that early work was Mark II, and Mark II function points went on to become a full ISO standard. Uh, if Pug function points split in the late uh, 90s. The Canadians developed what they called the full function points and they developed that for process-driven software. It was very similar to um, if Pug in, in some ways, but it had a lot more alignment with, with what was happening within Mark II. What happened uh, in the late 1990s was that a group of experts that had been working during that time on the ISO framework and were experts in all of these different methods got together to distill the essential ingredients, I guess, out of all of the different methods, Mark II, Full Function Points, ISPUG and NESMA, to develop um, a new function size mission called COSMIC. And initially it was called COSMIC FSP, uh, recognising the contribution for function points. COSMIC um, also became an ISO standard, as did IFPUG and uh, also NESMA. The progression since then is that um, COSMIC uh, it has recently um, become developed uh, again as an ISO standard and it's now in version 3. IFPUG just in the last uh, two weeks have uh, introduced IFPUG 4.3 and this PUG 4.3 is much more closely aligned to what they published as an ISO standard uh, early uh, 2002. So you can see that um, these two methods have come from the same genealogy. They, um, the COSMIC method is more a distillation of the other methodologies, whereas this PUG has been developed um, in continuum by the the Challenge Acting Committee within the uh, IFPUG group. So that's, that's the history and um, so when we're doing a comparison, it'll be between those, those methods. Um, when I wrote this presentation, which was prior to two weeks ago, 4.3 hadn't been yet published, so I've done it from a 4.2 perspective, which is what people know, but I was also the reviewer of 4.3, so very familiar with what's in that. I just wanted to give you my background in all of these methodologies, and you don't have to read them all, but you can see that I have been on the development committee or on the review committee of three of these standards. So I personally have a, um, a leg in every camp. I don't believe any method is necessarily better than another method. I think 
it is about uh, choosing the method that best suits your needs. And we're going to talk later in the presentation about what are those considerations that you need to have. And we're going to, I'm going to try and give you an understanding of what the differences between the methods are so you can make an informed choice. So the definition for what is functional size measurement method, which both of these methodologies have to be able to satisfy, is functional size is a size of software derived by quantifying the functional user requirements. Now you'll notice that A is underlined there, A size of software. It's not the size of software because each of these different methods will come up with a slightly different size. So in recognition of that, when we developed this definition, we made it A size of software. When we're talking about functional size measurement, that is actually the process of doing the measurement. So each of these methodologies has a slightly different process for actually performing the measurement. And when we talk about a functional size measurement method, it's a specific implementation of functional size measurement defined um, by a set of rules that needs to be conformant to the uh, rules that were defined within 5014143. So the characteristics of uh, functional size measurements are those that we're quite familiar with within um, most of the more familiar with these kinds of methodologies than the others. But it's essentially that we measure the functional use of requirements and we don't allow the physical and technical components of the software or the quality requirements of the users to influence that size. So it's very much determined by how the users understand that the software is to deliver its functionality. So what functionality that software is to deliver. It also does not take into account when measuring the size, the effort that it's taken to develop that software. It's very much proportional to the amount of functionality, irrespective of whether it took a long time to build or a small time to build. However, that doesn't preclude the effort being proportional to functional size. It's also independent of the methods being used. So it doesn't matter whether you use agile methodologies or traditional waterfall methodologies, the size of the software is independent. And we think it's very much to be similar to measuring the size of the house. That the house is a house, irrespective of how long it took to build. So the basic concepts that underlie functional size measurement is that it has a user. So in order to deliver functionality, it has to deliver that to something. And in most cases, when we think about software delivering functionality, we think of a person. But that's not necessarily the case. Software can deliver functionality to other software, or in the case of real-time process control systems, it can deliver it to a piece of equipment or a piece of hardware. So when we're thinking about the functional requirements of software, we think very much about the interactions between the user and the software. So we're, we're talking about the elementary processes or transactions the user can perform. And we also think about the stored data. The, uh, this is the, the, the intelligence or the, the, the knowledge that the software has the capability of storing and being able to be retrieved at some time in the future. However, we know that when we're looking at user requirements, we just don't see functional user requirements. We frequently see quality requirements, things like the user wanting a particular type of interface or performance 